it is likely that a matriarchal culture evolved in India at a very early date. During this period, goddesses became popular. Kali is known as Adi Shokti or primordial energy. Probably she is one of the earliest concepts of religion and deity. She is depicted bare-bodied, suggesting her very early origin. There are 51 Adi Shakti Peets or ancient Kali temples spread across the Indian subcontinent. Interestingly, when their locations are connected, they possibly provide the direction of the early migration paths. Once I actually followed the Shakti Peets to trace the journey of Kali along the Himalayan rivers towards Mount Kailash. I traced the Shakti Peets from Mithila to Kathmandu and Muktinath in Nepal. Muktinath is located close to Koilash where a Shakti Peet is located. There are a number of Shakti Peets in the Kangra Valley in Himachal and a few in Punjab and Gujarat providing the migration path. One Shakti Peet is located on the Makran coast known as Hinglaj where Kali crosses the border of the Indian subcontinent. It is extremely interesting that Lieutenant Wilford a British officer wrote an article in the Asiatic Researches in 1794 where he established that the Nile River was known as the Kali River and this is mentioned in the Padma Puran and Skanda Puran. Thus it appears that the early migrating fraternities continued their journey beyond Kailash and the Makran coast and established their mother goddess in their distant settlements. In all probability, Kali manifested as Black Athena and Black Madonna in Europe. Why should a fair complexion fraternity worship a dark deity unless she was their deity since a very early period? It is possible that from Egypt, Black Athena reached ancient Greece and from Koilas, the Kali worshipping fraternities travelled via Turkey to Europe and established Black Madonna there. A majority of the rivers of the Indian subcontinent have feminine names like Ganga, Jamuna and Saraswati. It is likely that early matriarchal fraternities who migrated along these rivers named these rivers after their ethnic deity. Each of these river goddesses has a bahon suggesting the migration of specific fraternities along them. River Ganga has fish and makor as her bahon, Jomuna has turtle and Saraswati has avian goose as her bahon. In all probability, these were matriarchal fraternities in the early stage. Goddesses like Kali, Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Monosha and many others are extremely popular in India. It is likely that these goddesses emerged during a matriarchal period when women were considered as the depository of knowledge, wealth and power. As the matriarchal community spread to distant destinations, we find emergence of goddesses like Nat, Hathor and Isis in Egypt. They were the early deities who ruled the Egyptian civilization for a period before gods emerged in their pantheon. Similarly, in Greece, Athena was very popular at the early stage of the establishment of the European civilization. Athens, the ancient city of Greece, derived its name from Athena like Kolkata deriving its name from Kali. It is also possible that Troy and Tyre derived their names from Tara. It is extremely unlikely that these goddesses emerged during a patriarchal period. The matriarchal communities were probably known by different names like Kumari, Konna, Nari, Jiboti and so on. There are fraternities like Newari from Nari and territories like Kumayun from Kumari. In distant lands, they were known as Kimerians, Nurustani, Gajni and by other such names. In Africa, their settlements were known as Cameroon from Kumari, Kenya from Konna and Jibuti from Juboti. There is Konna in Turkey too. There are evidences to suggest that a matriarchal culture continued for a significant period which is not adequately recognized. It is important that we appreciate this phase of our past to understand various ground evidences. My humble mission is to investigate ground evidences and scientific data to establish, acknowledge and validate a period of matriarchal culture and its spread from India.